Hello, welcome to the Donahue Group. We're delighted you could join us for a half an hour of fast-paced conversation and insightful political insights. And <laughs> some levity. We got a guest? We got a guest? <laughs> yeah. a, guest. a surprise yeah. guest. <laughs> no awesome. guests. Excellent. I'm not going to mention that this is an award-winning show because we've covered that ground, I think, just a little bit. But, Ad nauseum. But please remember that this is an award-winning show after all. Joining me, Ken Risto, social studies teacher with the Sheboygan Area School District. Tom Paneski, math teacher for the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan. Cal Potter, <coughs> excuse me. Um, That's enough. <laughs> Cal Potter, excuse me, Cal. lower your voice. <laughs> Quit while you're ahead. <laughs> We're having such a good time here. Even the cameramen la laugh along with us. Former state senator, former assistant uh, superintendent of public education for libraries. I'm Mary Lynn Donahue, a simple city lawyer with O'Neill, Cannon, Holman, DeYoung. We're talking about state issues mostly, although I will note just for the record, and with some sadness in my heart, but I doubt in anyone else's, that this is probably the day that Hillary Clinton's um, campaign for presidency comes to an end. I think she's been a class act through all of this, I, um, and I'm sorry to see her go. Enough said, And Tom. if she doesn't, do we retape this program? <laughs> yeah. Well, my understanding from all the blogs is that she will concede that she doesn't have the, the uh, delegates that are necessary to win the race. But Although, neither does Obama. Yeah. At this point. Not officially. Not officially it doesn't yeah. happen. So anything can happen. And I know we're a little off point here, but should we take any bets as to who Obama's VP will be? I'm saying John Edwards. Sam Nunn. Sam Nunn? Yeah. Sam Nunn. Why? Georgia. Uh, older, Georgia. white, uh, respected, moderate, uh, an expert on defense, an expert on military but matters. But he's not even public office now, is he? That is correct. He has been out of public service for uh, for some time now. But he's he's been on a variety of commissions and is mm -hmm. perceived as someone who also understands how the Senate works and how Congress works. And uh, if President-elect Obama, if that should happen, is going to need all the help he can get in that matter. He sure will. South or southwest, maybe Richardson. South. Yeah, Richardson. Richardson's another good choice. Yeah. I don't know about Edwards because uh, his wife was on uh, public radio the other day and her cancer has spread to her bones. Oh, and, my. And she was oh, I did not explaining her situation. and So I don't know if that's going to be a I don't good situation so. for yeah. him. Yeah. I mean, it is a brutal political world these yes. days. I mean, it's yeah. always been brutal, but it yep. seems especially so. And he's young enough that he is days ahead in politics, I think. Sure, yeah. sure. Tom, any ideas? Uh, you won't one? even talk about Democrats, the senator will you? from Virginia, was it a Warner? A Warner? Yeah. Well, there's Warner, and then there's also Webb, but Webb says he doesn't want oh, the job. Um, uh, okay, there's the... Uh, Webb's the Vietnam War veteran, who'd yeah. be a great choice, and Virginia's in play with him, but he said he's not interested he's in the job. Interested. He said his, he could best serve the country and, and Obama if he were president by staying in the Senate. But uh, well, it'll be interesting. How about Bird? <laughs> oh, stop! And it may be, it may be eventually. Hey, you know, Obama. Just stop. <laughs> Pick up West Virginia. Senator Emeritus. <laughs> oh my! I just wish they that Clinton and Obama had not sort of poisoned the water between them because. That would be a dynamite ticket to have both of them. Still may happen. I uh, think it might happen. Yeah. It still might happen. I, I would hope I would, it would. I, really I would be just hell for. for I mean, the exit Obama. polls that you saw from Virginia and some of the other races um, were 30, up to 30 percent of Clinton supporters were not going to vote for my Obama. Wow. Just you know, I'm sure, a certain percentage will not yeah. uphold what they said in the heat of the uh, sure. disappointment or or elation of the campaign. But still, there just shows that there are two camps here. And I think women particularly, I know my wife is very supportive of Hillary and has always been and really would like to see uh, her continue and be involved. And I think there are a lot of women who, who really see uh, an allegiance with, with the first woman candidate uh, that has gotten this far. And I think they're looking for her to be around. Well, and it's hard because I don't think there are any, none at least that come to mind, although you may have some ideas, any viable women who are as, as strong, as well-known, uh, as gutsy as mm -hmm. as Clinton, and so I don't know when this ever happens. And not to be president just because you know a woman should do this, but I I really do think that the United States is ready for uh, a woman president, yeah. and and I think women bring some strengths to the political arena sure. that that men do not. 
And, and it's so close. I mean, if she were behind by four or 500 votes in the delegates, but when you're behind by maybe 175 or whatever, that's nothing when you're considering you're, you're dealing with 4,000 some delegates. Yep, yep. Yeah. That's actually a couple of caucuses. Sure. Because there's been a lot of talk on the, I know we gotta get back to state eventually, but there's been a lot of talk on the, in the blogosphere about the analysis that have been done about how disproportionate the power of the caucuses are in the, in yes. the Democratic side. I can't speak to the Republican sure. side. And where, unrealistic to some extent. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, the, the I, criticism... I go back to my political yeah. years. I was county chair of the Democratic Party in, in the early yeah. 70s. And that's when George McCovern ran. And George worked the young people and the mm -hmm. caucuses and the certain types of things. And that's why we got the reforms we did, is because it really didn't reflect accurately the popular vote. He was blown out of the water um, come the general election. Yeah, a couple hundred thousand votes in a state will get you as many delegates as a couple of million votes in a, a direct primary yeah. election. Yeah, yeah it, it's so. an interesting process, and of course the Democrats has always, God bless their hearts, managed to be messy and dysfunctional, and, yep. um, but they do it with such vigor and such elan, as opposed to the Republicans who when they're tanking just some panache. kind of... you're looking for the word panache. Panache, thank you. <laughs> Republicans just seem sort of depressed about dysfunction, whereas the Democrats revel in it. <laughs> Nobody does it better <laughs> than the Democrats, but That's true. Oh, in any event, um, panache. I'm I'm Panash. thinking it's going to be Hillary as as VP, oh. and and I would like to see that. Although I she I think she's a fine senator, but um, I don't know. We'll um, we'll be able to predict along with the name of the lobster, the name of the vice presidential candidate. Call into this TV station, right, guys? You know, up in the booth no, I, there, you would like some phone Hillary's calls. Hillary's going to be in the cabinet. Which cabinet, which, where? Why would you leave the Senate to go to a cabinet yeah. spot? I mean, that's silly. Well, in my You home. won't, but maybe <laughs> she will. <laughs> yeah. Why well, does she want to go back to the Senate? She got beat. <laughs> Let's go a little higher. Well, I think being a, a good senator is a position of huge power. Huge. And yes. I, Senator Kennedy's pointing out. Uh, He's yes. showing us all. Yeah. Yes. Especially and from New York. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And exactly. The yeah, and, and the reality is, if McCain's victorious, you know she's not an older woman. You know, an old woman. She's got you know four years. She can make the case. I told you, you know, in a way that probably is going to be more delicate than the way I'm going to put it. Is I told you so. He wasn't unelected, mm -hmm. unelectable. So mm -hmm. let's now, wait you know, resurrect now, this if, campaign again. Is he's not up for election, right? Obama for re-election in the Senate? Yeah. He's, no. No. So he could lose. And, and go, go return to, to the, the Senate. Senate, yes, yeah. as, sure. as, as would Hillary yeah. as would Clinton and McCain yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, right. All three of them, they can lose yeah. and go All back. three rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't had a senator as a yeah. president from the Senate since uh, Kennedy. Jack Kennedy. Whose biography I just finished. Now, there was an interesting time. <laughs> but we are going to move along, and we're going to just rein ourselves back in from the excitement of the national Better level. Better start in the last part when we talk about lobsters. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't, I don't think so. know. Name, mm. name the lobster, name the VP, you know? I mean, this show could really take off. A good off. lobster dinner. All right. <laughs> yeah, good lobster dinner. Don't underestimate it. Gentlemen, pay you attention. You have to bring that costume next program. Yes. Gentlemen, pay Sorry. attention. <laughs> Please, if I, could have, if I could have your attention. Good things <laughs> happening in this state, uh, as well as bad. The Great Lakes Compact was finally signed. <coughs> hurrah, hurrah. The um, vote uh, in both houses, uh, as it turned out, was pretty overwhelming. I don't know what happened to change that, but uh, the assembly came through, uh, I think with a large majority, if, if I'm not mistaken, and Doyle signed it. Now we just have to have three other states and the U.S. Congress sign. Um, I think it may be an uphill battle since in the Senate um, there are senators from states that want our water, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, any comments on that? Well, I think Congress will go along with it for the simple reason that they've set up the mechanism for which this was going to play out, you know, that the states had a vote on it. And I think it would be a very uh, sad day in the, if the Senate reversed itself and yeah, said, yeah. now the process we established to ratify this compact is now reversed. We don't agree with it. I, I think you'd have all kinds of heck breaking loose. I would think you'd get 60 senators to stop a filibuster. I mean, because a senator can't put a hold on a, on a, they can put holds on appointments, but they can't put holds on, on pieces of legislation like. Well, you need cloture, think. but I don't think this is a, a filibuster issue, yeah. not yet, at least. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if, if the Southwest is drying up and blowing away or something, maybe you'd 
you'd see it. But well, water not is yet. gold. I, it is. It is. Yeah. It's it's really it's really pretty remarkable. I think there will be alternatives. I mean, if you look at the Middle East, a lot of it's desalinization and so on. There are technologies today that I think there will have to be looked at for the Southwest. Mm -hmm. Great well, even, and even California. Sure. Absolutely. Um, we're going to just uh, talk a little bit about um, our um, judge issues or justice issues. Um, on the good side, uh, a retired uh, Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor was in Milwaukee to speak to uh, the Milwaukee Bar Association and business leaders. That's my understanding there were up to 700 people. And uh, I could have gone if I'd cleared my schedule, but I couldn't quite, work, pull that, huh? uh, couldn't quite pull that to, uh, <clears throat> off. Um, she's distraught about the state of judicial elections, and um, uh, who can blame her? And um, it really does seem that uh, the, she, she referred in her speech to um, a group, um, I believe in Ohio, something of a vigilante group called Jail for Judges um, that is really looking uh, to, you know, put judges in jail, uh, you know, whatever. Um, but it seems like we've lost the, um, the respect for this branch of government that really should be above the the give and take of the legislature and the, and of the executive branch. Um, well, the, the headlines usually are some seriously abusive case or some heinous crime, and the person, the judge says, uh, "We'll give you uh, one year or thirty day or you know six months or something." and put you on probation and training or something. And people, that makes the news and people just get, where is this judge coming from? You know? And my response <laughs> to that has always been, I assume because you have such strong opinions, you were in the courtroom and you understand everything that went on and all the issues that were taken into consideration. There have been several judges locally that I have disagreed with, you know, in terms of sentencing of sexual assault victims, for ex uh, perpetrators. Um, and, and I have been personally critical. Um, not that I would say anything specific and out loud because lawyers really should not do that. I mean, it's in our code of ethics that we don't criticize judges. Again, trying to maintain the respect for the system. Um, but then I realized, you know, I wasn't in the courtroom. I don't know all the facts. I don't know what happened. I don't know what the judge took into account when he or she was making a decision. So, well, in Sheboygan County, he. Um, and so, so it is interesting, but I think you're right. And, and I think these things have notoriety now that they did not used to have. And um, I mean, when you have a guy who's high on prescription drugs who kills a teacher and her baby and, and, and then, his, the then daughter. is pardoned or let go or on probation and then commits another crime and then is on probation and then commits a third crime and you think, uh, mm -hmm. hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they get concerned about the judges. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I, I mean, they work within the laws that they have. And, um, uh, you know, the drunk driving thing, of course, I think yes, is much more of a policy driving. discussion than it is what specific judges do. But, um, but I do think that trying to restore some, some level of dignity to, to the uh, third branch, as it were, and to accord it the fact that it's not supposed to be a part of the political mishmash I think that's what O'Connor was saying, and, okay. I, and I think we're pretty far away from it. And we know here with, with Gableman and, and, um, um, Butler. and Butler that, I mean, that was not a dignified campaign right. by any means. It's unraveled on several fronts. It's the type of campaigns that are raged, uh, waged. It's looking at the financing of these, where the money's coming from. And, and then, of course, we have the a seated uh, Supreme Court judge that has just been what, censored for her conflict of interest uh, situation. So I think the thing that Tom mentioned, that some of the decisions that the news media play up, plus these other aspects, have really put a cloud over the judiciary. And the more it does that, the more the news media feels that this is a, a, there is no respect that you have to uphold. Let's go after this in this branch of government. So it sort of feeds on itself, and it just goes lower and lower. And how do you resurrect again this institution that we sort of tried to hold with some dignity in the past? It's tough. I really, you know, there's 
there's, there seems to be, you know, the eight degrees of separation between the press and the people they're reporting on seems to have disappeared and, um, or at least gotten mediated in a way that's not very positive. So, but, um, well, Ziegler was, uh, Justice Ziegler was reprimanded by the um, uh, court, but not suspended for any period of time or, or anything like that. <coughs> the Sheboygan Press felt that was not sufficient. Any thoughts? Well, when the court says that it was a considerably, what was the phrase from the court decision? Serious and significant. Um, when something is serious and significant, I guess I would <coughs> expect a little bit more of an action than simply a verbal reprimand. Um, and that, that's what was disturbing when, when they talk about that. And when you know, Justice Ziegler herself admits that, well, what I did was sort of informally did a little gut check to sort of figure out, is this what I'm supposed to do when the code of ethics for lawyers is much more rigid than that and expects much more from their lawyers? That's, that's disturbing, too. So I would, have, I would have expected the justice to receive a little bit more of a sanction, than, or at least a suspension uh, for some time, just to set an example for future justices uh, of what's expected of them. I mean, it's, they have to hold themselves to at least the same standard as the lawyers that they referee every day. But they're only seven of those folks, and they sit around and get to know each other quite well. So I would suspect that some of it is the good old boy type situation that develops mm -hmm. with friendships. And it's tough. It's tough. When well, you've got to really work is. with that person you have and you're going to, right. you know, I think you put on paper that this was a, a bad situation, but then mm -hmm. when it comes to dealing out the punishment, what are you going to do? See, and what I don't know is is mm -hmm. what the court has done with similar cases, you know, and what their response was as well. But censure, I don't know. isn't that uh, enough of a black mark, uh, just being censured? Well, I think uh, she... For a, you know, Supreme yeah. Court, I, yeah. that's kind of a black mark. I, would, yeah. I wouldn't want that on my record. Well, it's certainly a cloud that she's been living yeah. under, yeah. And, and that is very tough. But um, I did really call him that indicated that... Um, uh, judges tend to be less uh, severe on themselves than they are on the lawyers who may commit mm -hmm. similar kinds of violations. And um, although there have been some justices that uh, judges and justices who have been susp suspended for periods of time, there was kind of a there was a judge in Milwaukee County who was really <laughs> just on the other side of something, and um, uh, they actually suspended him for a full year. Um, you know, he just really had reached that level of dysfunction that they really couldn't continue on. And, and um, <clears throat> so, you know, those things do happen. But I think it is very hard, you know, among, among the four of us, why would I censure you, Tom, just for your misguided political? No, just kidding. <laughs> just <laughs> oh, kidding. Oh, you can find a lot of reasons. <laughs> if we suspended you from this program, right. we wouldn't have anybody <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, moving on, uh, today, not good news. The um, uh, GM plant in Janesville will be closing down over a period of, I think, two years, as I understand it. Um, and um, uh, I think that sets Janesville back stunningly. It's um, 2,100 jobs, if I'm, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And um, now we have had gas crises before. We've had gas prices go up. We've had people shrink their cars. And then when gas prices go back down, <clears throat> the big cars come back. I mean, that certainly happened in Janesville. I mean, SUVs and, and pickup trucks, you know, big pickup trucks for a while were certainly not economical to operate. Um, I don't know what will happen. I did, are these gas prices permanent? I mean, will we go back down to the halcyon days of two fifty nine a gallon? Or uh, I don't know. I'm, Probably not. Probably not. There are some supply side issues in the gas side, but the Nigeria civil war is causing some difficulties. But I mean, the reality is, is you've got a big chunk of the planet now with India and China. I mean, that's what one third of humanity in those two countries, something yep, like that. Yeah, they're using it. Up. One third of humanity, and and they're industrializing, and they want to live like Americans, and that means they want cars and automobiles as well. And um, when you've got that many people starting to come online asking for those kind of same energy resources, it's just going to be difficult to see yourself down to 250 or 280 or whatever it might be in those days. Um, About Janesville, the story, one of the lines was 2010 at the 
latest, but they could close earlier if sales don't pick up for their line. They, they make the, the big SUVs with the mm -hmm. truck frames, et cetera, et cetera. So if they don't pick up, they might close 2000, well, sometime earlier than 2010. And that's, that's possible because, you know, again, looking in a crystal ball is looking in a crystal ball and you don't really know what's going to happen, but nobody's talking right now, at least about this economy in 2009, growing much more than it's growing now. And yeah. if incomes aren't rising, and if energy, even if gasoline prices sort of stabilize around eighty dollars a barrel or eighty-five, is probably what some people might think is going to happen. Um, you might see three seventy-five or three sixty for gasoline, but that's. I think people are really starting as we got to four dollars, really starting to do some you know gut checks of their own, you know, besides just besides the justice. And there are people, themselves. no matter what their affluent, are, are starting to think green and think, saying, yeah. do I need a vehicle that gets, you know, 15 miles of a gallon? Uh, yeah. Maybe it's not such a good idea, even though I can afford it, maybe it's not something I want to yeah. I want to have. Well, think of, the, think of the boating industry, too, for the mm -hmm. summer. Oh, yeah. There, you know, I suspect boating price, uh, the boating industry will be down, we're going to be depressed this yeah. This, this time around. Well, our friend uh, Dirk Seilman has a Prius and uh, enjoys it immensely, so hopefully at some point those cars will become more affordable and, uh, and uh, well, who knows how that will but, all play out. But I see, you know, these, these big uh, what are they, SUVs or uh, Suburbans or whatever they're called. Yeah. I mean, if you've got a big family or you're yeah. carting teams around, they serve a good purpose. Yeah. And they really do. Well, you'll have to be willing to pay for that. Uh, yeah, you got to be willing purpose. to pay for it. Yeah. Um, there was a, a long article in the um, Journal Sentinel that we talked about a little bit before we started about the uh, Democrats potentially taking uh, the assembly in November, and uh, what that might mean for um, for the state. Um, we have moved out of a, t a bad tax bracket. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think did we're not 11th now, rather than 6th, which we were at for a number of years. Okay. All and right. uh, that's due to a number of factors. One, the state has been very frugal, um, as well as putting caps on local units of government. Uh, but also other states have found themselves um, with populations, particularly as people have moved to the south and southwest, demanding more services. And so other states have now found themselves expending more money on services, just like Wisconsin did for many years. And so the gap between the states as far as what they spend and raise is less. Mm -hmm. And if you look at those rankings, I, I, I always point this out to people before you get too hepped up on uh, the per capita uh, difference between number 11 and number 5, for example, is maybe 75 bucks or something. It isn't a heck of a lot. And so when you look at what you do get in this state, for example, even at 11th with the university and tech colleges and primary and secondary education and parks and all the other things that we have, you know, is it worth 75 bucks a year per person? I, I always say it is. But these rankings are, are somewhat, the states are bunching more together, and that's probably mm -hmm. one of the explanations for it. Mm -hmm. But it's good news for people who like these rankings, and we are not in the top 10 any longer. Yeah. The Pew Charitable Trust uh, did their um, uh, rankings of states on a variety of criteria uh, in terms of money and infrastructure and education, and um, uh, Wisconsin got a real solid, sad B minus. Um, you know, not certainly not as bad as other states, but uh, in terms of not being able to keep its young people mm -hmm. um, because of really significant cutbacks in the state workforce, retiring a lot of people who have not only age but who have a lot of experience and and uh, talent to lend to younger people, and that's not around. And uh, the Pew study, at least, found that that was one of the main challenges for Wisconsin mm -hmm. was uh, maintaining a, a good, viable workforce and, um, and how that happens. And so that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, my sense is that Obama will be um, a good coattail for the Democrats. Uh, I mean, they made certainly wonderful uh, gains uh, in 2006. And my sense is that that they'll that they'll do that again in 2008, and it'll be a, all Democrats all the time. Tom, I don't know how you're going to 
handle that. Well, I'll survive. <laughs> these, these things swing. These things, these things swing. do yeah, swing, yeah, don't they? When, Bless the system. When they, when they stub their toe, then Republicans will come back. <laughs> I think, yeah, with, I think presidentially, Wisconsin is going to be very, very, very competitive. It's always been the last couple of elections already, um, and I think McCain will be a stronger candidate than some people give him credit at this point in the game. I mean, because except for you know people like us, nobody's paying attention anyway till Labor Day. Yeah, you know, it's just the reality of the situation. It's going to take a long time for those two candidates to introduce themselves, and there'll be you know all sorts of silliness between then and now too. Um, It'll, it'll be interesting to see. And I think I could, I could see Republicans getting energized and turning out the vote in Wisconsin as well as the Democrats. Clearly the campuses, I think, are... I talked to some of my former students coming back who are 18, 19, and 20, and uh, they are really very, very much more energized than they were when they were at South, for example. Mm. And I see the campuses um, really getting involved and getting interested uh, in ways I've never seen before. And it's going to probably swing more toward Obama than than, of course, uh, McCain at this point. But, so the campuses will play a big part, I think, this, in this election in Wisconsin. You know, it's not just the uh, coattails of Obama. It's the, uh, just the numbers of competitiveness. If you look, go back to the last election when the state yeah. Senate went Democrat, the assembly, I believe, 13 races were <clears throat> determined by 1,000 votes or less. So yeah. that's less than 100 votes <clears throat> in 13 races yeah. on an average. Yeah. So you can see once you get a higher voter turnout than you had two years ago, and you do have the coattail effect, you could easily see how things could switch around in the assembly. Oh, yeah, and, and um, I'm just going to be interested in that Kagan guard race. Yeah. Oh, yes. Because, I mean, that was very close, as I remember. Yes, it was. And um, They're going to have to start more television stations up there to have all the media <laughs> money that they're going to be spending, because there's, there's not I'm enough. We're going to have them on the show, you <laughs> know, and that way. Yeah. yeah. Political ads, 24 hours a day. Yeah. It's going to be, Wisconsin's going to get a significant amount of presidential money. And then, yeah, you're right, Garden. Garden Kagan is one of those very, very competitive house races um, for the Republicans to gain back. Right. And they don't have too many. And there's always that, you know, um, we had a fundraiser for Senator Feingold, uh, and, uh, which was a great event. And, I, you know, I just turned to him at one point and said, there's the sweetness of winning that election night, and there's probably hardly a better feeling uh, and then it just all goes downhill from there <laughs> because you become the incumbent and all these things are yeah. held against you and yeah. it's really yeah. it's really a very difficult thing to uh, to uh, to try to work out so who knows I mean I think Kagan's done some good stuff but you know there's always vulnerabilities and it'll be just interesting to see how the assembly uh, how the assembly plays out well thanks for joining us uh, we appreciate it and uh, hope to see you again